morning. Good to see you guys today. My name is Scott Matthews. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm the Elkhart Campus Pastor, and uh, it's good to be with you guys today. Uh, Drew's down downtown. I came up here. We flip-flopped, so I'm here with you guys. Uh, if this is your first time here, we hope you feel at home here at River Oaks. And regardless whether you are at the Goshen Campus, at ROEE, at the Elkhart Campus, we have one mission, and that is to make fully devoted followers of Jesus who go grow and show. We want to advance the kingdom of God in our city as a church. And that's what this series is about, Kingdom Come. It's about seeing the influence and power of God impact every area of our life, just flood every part of our life. And that was Jesus' main message. He taught the people, the kingdom of heaven is like, he was constantly saying that, the kingdom of heaven is like this, the kingdom of heaven is like that. Jesus was explaining what it means to be a citizen in his kingdom. He was going down through the laws of his kingdom and the commands of his kingdom. He says, this is how I want my people to live. And with that, when we live like that, Jesus tells us, we'll be blessed. And not only will we be blessed, it'll bless people around us. He says, it'll make you salt and light. If you live the way I called you to live, Jesus says, it'll make you salt and light. You'll have impact for my kingdom. So important that we understand that. And like Drew said, it's, it's not about treating these things, at, like Jesus said, as, as a list of rules, but these are attitudes of the heart. Because when, when Jesus changes our life, all things are made new. I told our Elkhart campus this, and I'll tell you guys this as well. The world needs to see God's people living righteously. Guys, the, the world needs to see God's people living the way he called us to live. The world needs to see that. The world needs to see godly marriages like we talked about last week. The, the world needs to see how you handle pain. The world needs to see how you handle struggle. The world needs to see how you handle suffering, like when your team doesn't make the Super Bowl. Okay? <laughs> the world needs to see how you respond. The world needs to see how you respond to being wronged. The world needs to see how when you respond with humility and, and love and with mercy and, and when you become a peacemaker, when people see that, it brings heaven to earth. Guys, as a follower of Jesus, your company needs you. The company that you work for, they need you. Your, your school that you, that you uh, go to school at needs you. Your customers need you. I don't care if you're a stay-at-home mom. I don't care if you're a retired grandparent. I don't care if you're a corporate executive or a salesman. Whatever, whatever area you are in life, like, like we talked about last week, we need God's people to step up and be who called us to be. The world needs to see God's people living differently in every sphere of life. Because Jesus said we can be the, the light of the world for him. We can be the salt of the earth. And we talked about that a few weeks ago. What does salt do? It changes the flavor. When you're at a, a restaurant and they bring you some bland food, what do you do? You throw some salt on there. What does salt do? It changes it. When you see light penetrate a dark room, it changes it. Jesus says your life has that kind of impact for his kingdom. In your home, on your job, in your family, wherever that, wherever you're at, Jesus says, as my followers, you change the atmosphere with how you live. And we're going to continue this discussion of kingdom impact through our lives today. And last week, Drew talked about kingdom impact through marriage and relationships. And this week, we're going to take the next section that Jesus talks about in the Sermon on the Mount. And that is with retaliation. How do you retaliate, right? How do you respond after being offended? How do you respond after you feel like somebody's done you wrong and you want to get even? How, how do you respond to people who feel like you're enemy, even when those people are in your own family? How do you respond to that? Because how you respond in these situations should show people that heaven has come to earth through your life. And we're going to talk about this. We're going to unpack this as Jesus talked through this. But I want to come back to this again because I think it's so important that we understand this. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, verse 13. Jesus says this, you are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it's lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? No, it'll be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world. God, he's talking about you. You guys sitting in this auditorium, you watching online, he's talking about you. You're the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. The Messiah, 
The Savior of the world says that you have impact. You can change the world around you for the sake of the gospel. As a believer, guys, you need to drill that into your head. Your life has impact for the kingdom. That needs to be drilled into your mind. My life has impact for the kingdom. Say that with me. My life has impact for the kingdom. Yeah, you guys didn't drink coffee this morning. Let's try this again. Okay? My life has impact for the kingdom. You got to put that down in your mind. That, that how I live, how I respond, how I, how I walk out my marriage, how I respond to wrongdoings has impact for the kingdom of God every day. Everything you do has impact for God's kingdom everywhere we go. People should see the power of God through your life, through how you handle circumstances. And again, this is what Jesus was trying to teach his followers. He was trying to teach them. He was trying to teach them that, that how when we follow his teachings, our lives will be blessed and the kingdom of God will be advanced. More people would become disciples because of how we lived. Let me show you what Peter says, one of his disciples. First Peter chapter 2. Pick it up in the middle of verse 9. Peter says this, for you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Guys, he's talking about you sitting right here. He's talking about you all. His very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you had no identity as a people, now you're God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Dear friends, I warn you, as temporary residents and foreigners, keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then, if they accuse you of doing wrong, what will happen? They will see your honorable behavior. And they will glorify God when he judges the world. That's amazing. When you live the way God calls you to live, it'll bring impact for God's kingdom. He said, God will be glorified through through your life. People will see him through you, through how you live. And that is what Jesus was trying to tell his followers, just like Peter said. Our lives of holiness, our lives of righteousness and obedience to him has impact. Now, Jesus is talking about this impact in a section in what he's talking about. So we talk, he talked about it through marriage. Now the next section he's talking about is in retaliation. How do you retaliate, he's talking about. H- how do you do this, right? How do, you re- how do you handle being offended? How do you handle your enemies? When people offend you, Jesus says, this is how you respond. Matthew chapter 5. Keep your finger on Matthew 5. We're going to be there for a minute. Matthew 5, verse 38. Jesus says this, you have heard the law that says the punishment must match the injury. An eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But I say, do not resist an evil person. If somebody slaps you on the right cheek, offer the other cheek also. If you're sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat too. If a soldier demands that you carry his gear a mile, carry it two miles. Give to those who ask and do not turn away any those who want to borrow. Now, i got to explain something here real quick. This is actually one of the hardest things for a lot of Christians to understand. But but first, Jesus says, you've heard it said. You heard that it was said. But then he says, but I say. So you guys got to understand this. So the the people of Israel live by the laws of Moses. The first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, uh, contain the laws of Moses. Those first five books are what uh, are called the Pentateuch. Five is Pentateuch. The Pentateuch. So within that is the laws of Moses. And the people of Israel lived by those laws. It was their constitution. It was taught to them as kids. So when Jesus referenced the laws of Moses, he knew exactly what they were talking about. But here's the problem. The people, when they heard it, their rabbis and their teachers taught them their version of the laws. And Jesus says, no, no, no. Let me give you the original meaning of what Moses meant when I gave it to him. You heard one version But let me give you the original version. This is what you need to know. And this is what Jesus was trying to tell them. And a set of those laws that he pulls out are called the laws of retaliation. Right? This is what they live by in the community of what happened. Okay? These were the laws that that show that a punishment has to fit a crime. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Now, God set these laws up because he didn't want a person to retaliate beyond what a, what, a, what a crime needed. He didn't want somebody to go above and beyond. So he says, this is what it's meant for you guys. And often a judge who was a priest would render these decisions. 
But the, with the priests, when they taught this, they forgot about God's laws of mercy as well. See, God's ultimate goal is for us to pursue peace when we pursue justice. God's goal was not for us to just have, have personal revenge, okay? That wasn't the goal. There's a difference between justice and revenge. It wasn't eye for an eye for revenge. It was for justice. And I like how uh, this, uh, this doctor of psychology, Leon Seltzer, puts the difference between revenge and justice. We need to understand this. Revenge is like a personal vendetta fueled by emotion. But justice is righting a wrong without emotion. Emotion is taken out when it comes to justice. Revenge, revenge is about getting even. It's about getting payback. Somebody did something to you, I'm going to pay them back. But justice is about restoring balance. Now, see, those things might seem like they're the same, but oftentimes when people seek revenge, they go above and beyond and they do too much because they're in the heat of emotion. But justice is about restoring balance. When people t- try to get revenge, often they break laws and break morals in an attempt to get even. But laws use, but uh, justice uses laws to get right and to right or wrong. Revenge just has cycles, right? Somebody does you wrong, that, that you, you do wrong to them back, and it's just a cycle. You guys ever heard of the Hatfields and the McCoys? Those two old families that were just back and forth, just cycles, just generations of families attacking each other, right? There's no resolution. But justice brings closure. Justice brings closure to a matter so that an offense can stop. Whatever led up to the offense, the punishment would stop, would stop that, that, that crime. Guys, we serve a God of justice. Even when we want to seek revenge, it says leave revenge up to God because when he does it, 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 it brings justice. That's what it's talking about. Matter of fact, this is what Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verse 19. He says, dear friends, never take revenge. Never take it. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I'll take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. God says, revenge is up to me. I'll pay them back, God says. He says, let me take care of them. Paul is actually quoting Deuteronomy because he says, God is a God of justice. God brings closure. God rights wrongs. God restores balance. And guys, I'll tell you this. When this world is over, the heavenly judge will bring his justice on this earth. And that's going to be a good thing. Now, Jesus tells his followers how in the kingdom, this is how we retaliate when we are done wrong. And guys, you got to understand this. First, as a believer, don't be shocked when somebody does you wrong, especially when you're a new believer. It's, it's all part of, of the, the maturation phase as a, as a Christian. Wrong, bad things will happen to you as a Christian. That's just part of it. It doesn't stop because you gave your life to the Lord. And honestly, I don't even think that God and people have the same understanding of bad, honestly. God, God allows bad things to grow us and to shape us. You're going to have trouble, the Bible says. Trouble will come. Jesus makes it very clear. He said, in this world, you will have plenty of trouble. You'll be done wrong by your family, by your spouse, by your co-worker. And it's so important. Yes, the weapon will form. It will form. But when we live the way God called us to live, the weapon won't prosper. It won't prosper at all. Now, again, when we respond with a kingdom response, you guys, it not only blesses us, it makes us salt and light in the process. We've got to read this again so you didn't miss it. It's what Jesus says, Matthew chapter 5, 39. He says, but I say, do not resist an evil person. If somebody slaps you on the right cheek, offer the other cheek also. If you're sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat too. If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it two miles. Give to those who ask and don't turn away from those who want to borrow. Now, without a doubt, when people heard that, they probably thought Jesus was crazy. They're probably like, Jesus, ain't no way in the world I'm going to let somebody smack me and and let them get away with it. Jesus, there's no way I'm going to give somebody my my cloak because they so suit my shirt. There's no way. Jesus knew. They were probably offended when they heard Jesus say this. Because Jesus knew our natural response is to get even. Right? Our natural response is to get people back. Let me tell you, I was, when I was a kid, I was like fifth or sixth grade, we had, a, growing up in my parents' church, we had an after-school program. And after school, they would take us over to the church, and a bunch of kids from the city would come, and we'd do our homework. And when we got done with our homework, we'd go outside and play basketball. So we were playing basketball one day, and, and it got pretty chippy. And I was driving to the lane, and a kid just checked me. He just pushed me, and I fell down to the ground. 
And without thinking, I just popped up. I, I, I grabbed the kid, bam, uppercut him right in the gut. You know, we're, we're tussling a little bit. And, and as, soon as, as, as soon as we were doing that, somebody came and they grabbed us. But it felt good, <laughs> right? It, it felt like a release. Like, man, it felt good to just punch this kid in the gut to let him feel what I felt. Because I was hurt. I was mad. I scrubbed, I scrubbed, scrubbed my ankle. You know, I, I, scrubbed, I scrubbed the, the back of my arm. I, man, it felt good for that moment. But then when you take revenge in your, in your hands for a moment, you tend to get in trouble. So they took us back into the, into the church, and we had to sit there. Our day was over. My dad came, and he whooped my butt. <laughs> so that, 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 that moment of satisfaction was not long-lived, okay? <laughs> but that's what happens when, we, when you want to retaliate in your, own, in your own ways. Same thing. When I played football, I played football for Concord. I'll never forget. I can hear my coaches now. They say, guys, keep your composure. They would tell us, when you go out on the field, keep your composure. Don't cost your team a, a penalty, a flag, because you want to do something stupid. And what happened? We do something stupid. This is just crazy. And I, I, I'm sure you'll see this when the Bengals beat the, beat the Rams today, right? <laughs> or whoever. I don't, I don't even care who wins, actually. But I remember, I remember when I was, we, we'd be playing football, especially when we'd be playing one of our rivals. They, I, I was a running back, so when I got tackled, sometimes they twist your ankles or they spit in your face or something, or they say something dumb, and I'd pop up and I'd retaliate, I'd push the kid or say something stupid back. And every time I did that, guess what happened? Guess who was right behind me? The ref. Flag, 15-yard penalty. Like, come on, our coach was like, dude, I told you. He said, get back to the huddle. Our coach would always say, guys, you don't retaliate because guess who always gets caught? The second guy. They always told us that. So Jesus is trying to tell you, get back to the huddle. Get back to the huddle, Jesus is saying. As followers of Jesus, we live differently. We respond with mercy. We seek mercy. As followers of Jesus, we seek and to respond with mercy. So important for us to understand. Now, guys, mercy is holding back a punishment that somebody deserves. He even said, go a step further. He said, do right to them. Do right to folks who've done you wrong. That's a shocker. Somebody's wronged you. Somebody disappointed you. Somebody's insulted you. Jesus said, like, like somebody smacks you on the other cheek, Jesus says, don't respond with that same retaliation. Now, I think it's, under, it's important that we understand the, the, the cultural understanding of being smacked on the cheek, okay? Th this wasn't about starting a fight. It wasn't really even about physical abuse. Back in Jesus' time, when somebody, when somebody did that, it was like an insult. It was like somebody cussing you out or somebody, you know, flipping you the middle finger. It was an insult. It wasn't really even about fighting and retaliating, and retaliating with anger. But it was such a bad thing that you could actually go to court over it and be fined. And Jesus said, just take the fine. Go ahead and be insulted. If they insult you again, go ahead, Jesus is saying. If you get sued for your cloak, he says, give them your coat too. He says, if, if you're in court because somebody's suing you, he says, cooperate with what they're demanding from you. Jesus tells his followers, guys, if a Roman officer tells you to carry his stuff a mile, go two miles, go extra. See, what happened was back in those days when the Romans would take over a country, if a soldier was walking down the street and wanted somebody to carry his bags, you had to stop and do it. You had to walk a mile. You had no choice. It was the law. You had to. If you were walking with your family and you were walking around, Jesus, uh, the, the soldiers say, nope, let's go a mile. Jesus said, go two. Now, I know in our, in our culture, that just sounds crazy, right? We're like, no, Jesus, I got to respond. I'm not going to let nobody diss me like that. Forget that. Right? We're not doing that. Our, our, our culture is so much about uh, getting revenge and retaliating. It sounds dumb. But Jesus says, respond with mercy. Because we won't, because this is why you respond with mercy because that person would never expect it. They would expect you to try to fight them back. They would expect you to try to, try to retaliate. But he says you respond with mercy because they would never expect it. And, and not only that, it's like a spiritual uppercut. Bam! They never see it coming. Like, man, I just wronged this guy. He told me, really? He, this is what he's saying? Jesus says we respond like this also because it makes you a child of God. God allows his rain and his sunshine to fall on the just as well as the unjust. And he says, when you do that, it makes you a child of God also. Jesus wanted them to understand that when you don't respond like the world, it actually puts you in control. When you don't respond with retaliation and hot anger, it puts you back in control. It actually stops the, offense, the, the, the offensive issues immediately from escalating. It puts you back into control. Now, let's understand what Jesus is saying, but guys, you also got to understand what he's not saying in this, okay? 
Jesus is not telling us that we need to allow systemic injustice against people. That's not what he's saying. He's not saying that we need to allow repeated uh, people to take repeated advantage of you and physically abuse you for their benefit. It's not what he's saying. He's not talking about allowing oppression and evil to run rampant. No, because we serve a God of justice, and God wants us to pursue justice. It's important. But what he is saying here is we, when we've been personally offended and we have the opportunity to respond with grace and mercy and change the situation, he says, take it. Take that opportunity. It's important to take that. He showed, because this shows that you are a child of God, he says, take that opportunity. So important for us to understand. Let me give you guys a, an example of this, a, a biblical example. King David was one of the greatest kings in history, right? But before David was a king, he was a general in Saul's army. David had killed Goliath, killed this big old nine-foot dude, knocked him down with a little pebble, killed him. And, he, and Saul said, David, you're going to be my general. But David got so popular that Saul got jealous. And Saul was like, I got to kill this guy. This guy's done for Right? Saul got so jealous of, of, his own, of his own general, and he tries to hunt David down and kill him for years and years, and, 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 and David's just running for his life okay, all, for all these different years. So, Saul, so uh, David finally catches up with Saul, and he has an opportunity to pay this guy back. If you read it, it's really interesting. Saul is, uh, he catches Saul in the cave taking a dump, <laughs> and he walks in. He's like, now I got my revenge. Now I can get this guy. But let's see what David did. Let me show you what he did. 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 4. David's guys are like, dude, it's your opportunity, man. His, his, his uh, uh, men whispered to him, today the Lord is telling you, I'll certainly put your enemy uh, into your power to do with what you wish. So David crept forward, probably was closing his nose, crept forward and cut off a piece of the hem of Saul's robe. But, when David's, but then David's conscience began to bother him. Because he had cut Saul's robe. He said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do, do this to the Lord the king. I shouldn't attack the Lord's anointed one. For the Lord himself has chosen him. So David restrained his men and he did not let them kill Saul. Guys, here's the, here's the guy who had every opportunity to kill a man who's been trying to kill him. And as a matter of fact, Saul leaves the cave and David, David runs into him. This is what he says, verse 12. He says this, may the Lord judge between us. Perhaps the Lord will punish you for what you're trying to do to me, but I'll never harm you. Oh, that's amazing. Here David has an opportunity to kill. I mean, David is running for his life from Saul, guys. He's running from his life. I mean, year after year, he's just for years. He, Saul is trying to hunt him down with spears and his, his, his chariots, and he has no rest. I mean, his family and his kids are scattered. And here he has an opportunity to kill and get even. And he says, no, I'm going to leave that to God. I'm going to leave this vengeance to God. And God does take care of Saul. He does it his way. Guys, now I'll tell you what, if that was most humans, we probably would have dropped Saul right then and there. But David said, nope, this, in this situation, vengeance belongs to the Lord. Saul was so shocked that David didn't kill him. Saul was like, dude, you're a better man than me. I, I, there's no, I probably would have killed you. I see that God is going to make you the next king. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 22 says this. Don't say I'm going to get even for this wrong. Wait for the Lord to handle the matter. Wait for the Lord to handle the matter. That's exactly what David did. He waited for the Lord to handle the matter. He paused. He, he showed mercy. When he could have retaliated with revenge in his own way, he showed mercy and God took care of the situation for him. How many of you have wanted to brake check somebody who was riding too close to you on the highway? Yeah, probably on the way over here. How many, how many of you guys wanted to flip somebody off because they cut you off in traffic? Right? How many times have you, have you kept mental record of what your spouse did to you and you wanted to retaliate? Well, she didn't apologize, so I ain't washing the dishes. Forget that. Well, he didn't do what he said he was going to do. Guess what? I ain't, I ain't cooking dinner tonight. Forget that. Now, how many times have we, have we tried to retaliate in spite because somebody's wronged us, because somebody says something to us, because somebody's hurt our feelings? We, we, we respond in spite. Jesus says do the opposite. And watch how it changes the atmosphere in your home. 
Watch how it changes the atmosphere in your office and in your school and on your team and even in your family. The Bible tells us to, to not keep a record of wrongs that have been done to us and try to do things out of spite. When we do that, when we, when we do the opposite, when we show mercy, watch how the kingdom of God comes and God's will becomes be, uh, as being done through us. Now, Jesus continues his teaching on the mountainside. Let's, let's continue this. Verse 43. Jesus says this, you have heard the law that says love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say love your enemies. Pray for those who who persecute you. In that way, you'll be acting as true children of your father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good. He sends his rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you're only kind to your friends, how, much, are you, how are you any different than anybody else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, that word perfect means mature. You're supposed to be mature, uh, he's saying. He's saying, my followers are different. Guys, first of all, it was not in the law of Moses for us to hate our enemies. The Jewish rabbis had twisted the scriptures to make it seem like they could hate people who weren't Jewish or people who had did them wrong. Now, it's probably shocking you guys when Jesus said this, because, again, it's our natural tendency to be bitter, to hold grudges against your ex-wife or your ex-husband. It, it, it gets bitter. You get bitter and upset when you know you can't stand your old boss or those customers who've been getting on your last nerve. There's probably a, a lady or a man in your office right now who's, been run, who's just been running you ragged, right? But that's how it goes. As followers of Jesus, though, we walk in the spirit. And we allow God to order our steps and order our emotions. Some of those same people, some of those those same people who persecute us, those same people who seem like enemies, Jesus says, pray for them. Pray for their families. Pray that God will bless them just like he would bless you. Guys, I tell you, when we first launched our campus back in 2019, maybe some of you know this, uh, when we first launched our campus, we actually had the, uh, the head of the Northern Indiana Atheist Organization came in. Nobody knew who he was. We were setting up stuff in the auditorium and setting it all up, and, and he was down there taking pictures. He was taking pictures in the auditorium, and he started t- snapping photos in the lobby, and we were setting up our kids' stuff, and he's snapping photos in there, and we didn't know who he was. We just started talking to him, said hi to him, and he just st- struck up a conversation, and it was, it was good, and he ended up leaving. But some people knew who he was, and we come to find out, okay, this guy's one of the atheist organization uh, leaders, and we're like, okay, guess he wasn't staying for service. So, <laughs> so... So we found out who he was, and then fast forward a couple weeks, we, st- we went and served at the Trunk or Treat downtown. And guess whose booth right, was right next to ours? The Northern Indiana Atheist Organization, right next to River Oaks booth. So, so kids are literally coming and getting candy and flyers from the Atheist Organization, and they're coming and getting flyers from the church. So, like, so they're looking at their bag, and they're like two different things. Okay, you can choose which one, right? So we strike up a conversation with the guy, and folks are just talking to him and having a good time, and we knew who he was at that point. And he came up to us and he said, man, you guys are some of the friendliest people I ever met. He's like, I, I was trying to take more pictures, but I couldn't take more pictures because you guys just kept talking to me and saying hi. Because I couldn't even do the work I was trying to do. And here this guy who seemed like an enemy, we're treating him as a friend. A, a guy, I mean, we didn't tell him, man, don't ever come back here. Don't ever, don't ever set foot in here again. We're treating him as a friend. Let's make this more personal for you. Who is the person who's been getting on your last nerves since 2022 started? Who is that person that's been feeling like an enemy? Who is that group of people that just seem like they have it out for you? Who are those people? we got to understand, who are those folks that it just seems like they've just been an enemy to us lately? Let's take it nationally. Maybe it's the other party. Have you prayed for our president? Have you prayed for the previous president? How do you respond to people who don't agree with you? Have have, have you prayed for your kids' teachers, For, for the school board? For the school nurse, how do you respond to people who have different ideologies than you or or who might not see eye to eye with you or who don't agree with you? How do you respond? I wonder what our community would look like if God's people took what Jesus said seriously. I wonder what our city, I wonder what our state, what our nation, what our world would look like if God's people allowed the Holy Spirit to light a fire under them. And be salt and light and intentionally choose to live like citizens of God's kingdom. No, it's not supposed to be easy. 
What made you think Christianity was supposed to be easy? That's why we need the Holy Spirit. This isn't easy stuff. Jesus tells us it is a cost to be his disciple. We have to lay down our, 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 our lives every day, pick up our cross to follow him. Every day we have to do that. Jesus said there is a cost to being my disciple. And this is what it means to follow me. Guys, this week I want to challenge you. Read Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 through 48. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you and strengthen you in these areas. When you get done watching all your, all your, all your Super Bowl shenanigans the, the, this, this evening, when you get done, crack over Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 through 48. Ask the Holy Spirit to just deal with you in whatever area it is that you need help with. Pray for those enemies. Who are those people who seem like they just have it out for you? Those people who you just can't stand, who you just want to respond to. Lift that up to God this week and see what happens. God, my prayer is that we take the teachings of Jesus more seriously in 2022. My prayer is that as a believer, your behavior and your lifestyle, you see that that is what people are watching. People are watching what you post on Facebook. They're watching how you respond to problems and issues. The world needs to see how you are different. That's what makes you salt and light. The world needs to see how you respond when you've been done wrong. So important we understand it. Last scripture, and I'll, I'll let you go home with this. Romans chapter 12, verse 20. It says, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads, like a spiritual uppercut. <laughs> Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. That'll preach all by itself. Allow the Holy Spirit to use you and to guide you in everything you do so that the kingdom of heaven can come through your life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for another day. God, I thank you for the people walking in this room and who are here this morning. God, you know what all kind of tension and issues that they have to deal with, what type of drama that they have in their home and their families at work. God, help us to be salt and light this week. Help us to retaliate with a kingdom response. Help us to show mercy, Father, where, where, we, where we can. Give us your Holy Spirit, Spirit strength so that we can respond with mercy, so that people can look at our lives and see that we're different and that heaven can come to earth through us. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.